Today we are going to try and convert a liquid recipe, not well, mostly liquid, to a, a powder form so that I can create this and make it shelf stable. And it's a cream soup substitute. Um, so you can make it a cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, cream of broccoli, whatever cream you want. But what I need is I want it to be um, stable uh, on the shelf so that when I go out of town, um, when I get my RV, then I can just pack a couple jars of this away and um, make cream of whatever I want, whenever I want. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, and it will be uh, lactose-free. Not dairy-free necessarily, but lactose-free. Uh, because I will be using, from Honeyville, the um, dairy whey-based. So if you're allergic to whey, um, this may not work for you, and you just, just find another milk substitute um, that doesn't have the whey in it. You can It will taste different. Um, and you can also just use regular powdered milk if you, if you don't have any allergies. So, all right, with that said, I'm allergic to lactose, not whey. So this is Kat from an Itty Bitty Homestead. Come along while we try to make a recipe together, okay? All right, so I spent the morning breaking down the recipe. Um, hopefully I got the, the measurements correct. I have got three quarters of a cup of water that I've already boiled, um, so it's hot, and I just got to put it back on the burner, and it'll come right back to a boil. And I did that just to save some time. So we're going to use two tablespoons of butter powder, okay? So, this butter powder. I use this quite a bit. So, let's see. One, two. Okay. Okay, so butter powder. Three tablespoons of flour, which of course I didn't get out, but that's easy. Curious how this is going to work, too. Because you're supposed to cook the butter and the flour together to make like a roux first. So we'll see. This may or may not work. Um, the reason I'm also doing this is because I don't know. Do you ever wake up in the morning and you just have a craving for something? Well, I woke up this morning and I was thinking of my Auntie Rose and how when we used to go up to her uh, house up at the lake, um, she would, on Sunday mornings or Saturday mornings, make S on a shingle, okay? <laughs> and while it wasn't the favorite of all the cousins, I, I seem to remember loving it. So I'm trying to make a childhood memory, but with more modern stuff. Okay, so half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. I am using the low sodium. Okay. One tablespoon of the milk substitute. Okay. So basically, the milk substitute, I researched it that. Um, Half a tablespoon will make equivalent of half a cup of milk. If I add it, just added water. So, okay. And then I'm going to use one fourth teaspoon of salt. And I did cut that down from the regular recipe, I think. And I know I cut this down. Uh, one eighth teaspoon of black pepper. Now, the recipe calls for one fourth teaspoon. If you want it more peppery, um, go for it. All right, so that's all the ingredients. I'm just going to whisk these all together. All right, and then I am going to go put the um, put the water back on the boil, and I'll bring you over there. Okay, so this is my three fourths of a cup of water. Uh, I've got another fourth here to make one cup, which I think I'll need to add to this, but we'll see. This is, uh, I'm learning uh, uh, just as you are right now. So, okay, that's a boil. Don't get all of that. And then start whisking. 
And this will either work or it won't. <laughs> we'll see. Gotta lower this heat. And I want to try and cook this for a whole minute, but let's see already, I'm going to probably need the rest of the water. Should have been hot water, sorry. And let's heat back up. You know, maybe you can start this off with um, just regular water, just dump it all in and bring it all up to a boil at once. Might be easier to... Um, blend in the powders. I don't know. Uh, but it's coming right back up. Lower it back down to a medium high. Because you do want to cook the flour. You don't want this to be overrun with the flour flavor. Now, I'm just going to take this off the burner for just a moment while I can get the mushrooms. Okay. So, since this is such a small amount, um, I'm just going to add some mushrooms. And that's why I'm probably going to need more, more liquid. Because these mushrooms are going to um, absorb some of the liquid. Okay, and then I want to add... Oh, I don't know. Let's see, what's this? This is a half a teaspoon. Okay, so let's say... There's a generous half a teaspoon of mushroom powder. Definitely going to need more water. Okay, so this is another half a cup of water. Turn the burner down. Now I've turned it down to a, a little, little tiny bit below medium. So just added maybe a third of a cup, no, not even a third, a fourth of a cup of more water here. putting lids on behind you. Especially if I'm boiling something um, that's making any kind of steam, I don't want my dehydrated stuff exposed to the moisture in the air. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So that was like one and one and a quarter cups. Yeah, about one and a quarter cup of water total. Half a teaspoon of mushroom powder if you're going to make this mushroom flavored. Now, I will say it is a little clunky here. It's got little bits not super smooth, which there may be a workaround for that, I don't know. My shingles, as they are called, are already done. <laughs> They've been, it's actually my toasted bread. All right, let's give this a little taste. Well, not bad. Definitely probably use less than half a teaspoon of mushroom powder because that's really what I'm tasting. Um, yeah, 
but really it's not bad not as good it's not I'll be, I'm gonna, so I'm being honest it's not as good as making it with all the fresh ingredients um, that was phenomenal but I think if you try this and you tweak it a little bit and and we'll try it as is first and then maybe tweak it next time you make it if you cook something that tastes better than what you start with let me know um, I'm going to have to just t really taste this to see. Um, I can already say I'm probably going to need a splash more water, but it, I won't change my recipe. I'm just cooking this for a while, trying to get rid of some of these lumps and really to make sure that the um, flour is cooked. Yeah, and it's looking less lumpy. So. Because I know my Auntie Rose used to make this cream of mushroom soup. And you could probably leave out the um, mushroom powder. Um, I just, I happen to like mushroom flavor. And my mushroom powder is a combination of wild mushrooms, uh, cremini mushrooms, or cremini mushrooms, and white mushrooms. So um, I just had little bits of, in, in the several different jars and I just put them all together and put them through my processor. All right. Now I'm going to lower this down to low and I am going to take, this is hamburger meat that I cooked up this morning. And I'm just with just a little bit of pepper on it. Dump some of that in there. meat warm up. Does that just look repulsive? <laughs> Get a little split pea soup, but oh man, is it good! All right, so here we go. Shingles are ready. Let me see if you're ready. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this like this. All right. This is how my aunt used to do it. Let me get a quick picture of this, and then um, we'll do our taste test. Got my picture. So, let's have a little taste. Okay. That's good really good not exactly how as, as I remember but you know children remember things differently than the true facts when you're an adult but this is definitely good good really good I like it 
I will make this again and I will eat this for breakfast and not feed it to the dogs. Although my official taste tester just meandered in. You here to taste test those? Dozy, you here to taste test? Yep. <laughs> my cleanup crew. Mmm. Yeah, this is good. All right, there you go. I would call this test of a new recipe that will be shelf stable um, <clears throat> a success. So, if you like what you see, you want to see more, please take a moment and give me a thumbs up, um, subscribe to my channel, and share. Really, we love sharing. Just like I'm sharing this recipe with you. I will um, type up this recipe in the comments below for those of you who want to be brave enough to try it. And please, by all means, if you have any recommendations to make this even better, um, please leave a link below, uh, leave a comment below and let me know, um, and I will try it. And, and I will videotape it. So, um, and I will give you full credit. Um, yeah, so I want to uh, thank you all for stopping by and taking the time to watch the video. All right, God bless. Till next time. Hey, um, this is Kat from Itty Bitty Homestead, and today we are going to try, um, you're, I'm bringing you, a, oh my goodness gracious, <laughs> if I, only I had a brain.